Oh, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, a fly fish fanatic, and yeah, welcome to my tying bench. Today we're going to be going to the ocean. Uh, we're going to be tying a uh, coho salmon pattern. Uh, this has worked for me for cohos on the beaches, uh, in the estuaries. This has worked for me coho in the sloughs, in the backwaters, in the rivers. Um, it's also worked for me for pinks uh, in the same places. So um, it's a really good versatile pattern. Been around for a long time. I didn't invent this one by any means or even change it much. Um, I've changed some of the materials in it. Uh, and this is the California Neal. Pretty simple pattern. Basically, it's just a saltwater woolly bugger. Basically. So, okay, going to switch over. Uh, in the vise today, I've got a size 6 uh, Mustad O'Shaughnessy uh, straight shank. Straight eye, um, saltwater hook. Love these saltwater hooks. They're super strong. Uh, I've never had a had, had one bend open on me or break or anything. They're great. So I start with that. I'm using some Zemperfly Nano Silk in the. Uh, this is the um, lime. Yeah, lime green. Uh, just to get that started on here. Like I said, it's a pretty simple pattern. Um, just a little bit of a twist with some of the newer materials that are out there, but that's about it. So now I'm gonna take my. Uh, my um, grizzly cape here, my grizzle cape, and I'm just going to find a little, just a, a feather that I know is not the, not going to be used for anything else, but that can be used for this. Uh, that one might be a little bit too big. Um, I want a, bit, a little bit of a tail, but uh, the rest of this feather is not going to be used. Now, you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can tie in the, the back end. And then move this out of the way and then wrap it forward when you're done. But I like doing this a little bit different. So about like that length of a tail is what I want roughly. So I'm going to just hold it there. Peel back all my fluff on the back there. Put that right up against the bead. And I want that right on top. Okay. So I make sure this stays on top. And then as you go back, just try to make sure that that... Don't worry about all the fluff and all that stuff. If anything frays, there. It's a little on the long side, so I'm just gonna actually pull it back. Still a little long. Probably should have checked that before I started pulling, uh, cleaning, tying it down. Let's see. There, that's a bit better. That's a bit better. So, yeah, that's good. So, like I said, I'm not worried about all these little fibers that are sticking out and then I'm going to go under this and over and then I'm just going to come back and I'm going to nip that off and then I'm going to take my whip finishing tool and just give that a whip finish just so it doesn't go anywhere on me now I'm going to take a little bit of where did I put it uh, the Zemperfly um, oh, I'm going to put it away on myself here. Sorry, guys. Uh, Zemperfly has 0.2 mil silver wire. I thought I kept it out, but I didn't. So I'm just going to take a bit of that, a length of it. Obviously, I didn't have enough left. So and I'm just going to lay this on there. On my side. A couple of wraps. Pull it all the way in. So it's all the way back. All the way back to the to the tail. Come on back forward again. Like I said I'm not worried about all these little stragglers. And one more time. Whip finish. Remove your thread. Then because I've got some of these stragglers, whoops. Uh, what I like doing is just turning it over and just woo, just give them a burn out of there. They'll right. So, Right, just give that a clean. Doesn't matter, it's all going to be hidden anyway, so I'm not really too concerned about it. But now I'm going to take some Zemperfly Micro Glint in the, um, the Golden Olive. And this is going to be my main body color. Back. Nip that off. Come right back to the tail again. Make sure you get everything nicely covered. If you do it back there and back, you're awesome. Now you can, that's it, that's the body. Nice thin body on these. Whip finish, cut it off. If you want to, you can now put a UV coating on it. I don't bother, okay? Um, 
Then I'm going to find another good feather, but this time I want a good feather for actually doing a hackle. So I'm going to take one of these up here. Um, but I want one that's going to stay fairly thin, but long enough to go all the way back. Like that one, I'd probably do just nice. And then I'm just going to find out where I want my my length. And that's about it. That's where I want to start. It's about that long. So I'm going to just hold it right there. And I'm going to just take off all this bottom fluff. And then I'm going to re put tie on my green. But I want to just stay right behind the eye here, right? Oh, and this bee, by the way, is an oversized silver tungsten. Um, you don't have to go tungsten. It, I tie them with and without tungsten. Um, on this one here, because it is tungsten, I'll put a little black dot on it. So I know that it's tungsten. Because depending on the, uh, the water I'm fishing, um, sometimes I want it to go deeper, sometimes I don't, right? So <laughs> keep cutting that. Hold on. Beauty of nano silk is doesn't break. Not the nice thing about nano silk is the odd time if you don't think about it, you can cut materials quite easily. And I wasn't thinking there, so I was going a little tight. There we go. That's better, I think. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm going to get my hackle plier, and then, like I said, this is just a basically now it's just a woolly bugger, right? So I'm just going to put one, two right there, and then I'm going to come back. Don't let it go. It uh, popped out of my hackle plier. Actually, it broke. Putting too much pressure on. So I'll undo that. And again, I'll do one right up against, two right up against. And actually, you can see me that I'm I'm actually holding pressure towards the bead. And now I open up. Open up. Open up. And open up all the way back. And then I'll take my wire and counter rib, just like you would in a woolly bugger. Catch that in, let that go, jiggle your way through, bring this up in front of the bead, lock it in, helicopter, pull off your back piece. Two sets of whip finishes always in this one. I like having two sets. Uh, I usually put a little bit of head cement there if I want, but right now I'm not gonna. Then I'm gonna take my brush and just gonna brush that a little bit out a little bit just so you guys can see how nicely that lays. And that is what we want, right? I could have put actually a third, a third uh, round around the front here. This one uh, did hold, come back a little bit, but uh, scruffy and just, you want this uh, a fairly long tail, not too, too long. Like that's bordering on long. You want it as long as the body sticking past the hook. So that's maybe like the one bar, that last black bar. Maybe I could have cut, had it that much shorter, but that's it. So you want them fairly long. And this will, this will move in the, in the water really well, right? Because it's just sitting there. So... Alrighty, simple pattern, California Neil, just with a twist using the uh, micro glint, but that's that's about it. Uh, the other way I do it, just so you guys can see, uh, I use this as well. Instead of the micro glint, I'll use this, the flat braid from Zemperfly, um, and I'll use that. Uh, green is it seems to my, be my go-to for it, the chartreuse green, um, but I do tie it in pink as well. I tie it in red as well. Um, I, but I found the chartreuse, this one here, the, the, by far the most productive. <coughs> Alrighty. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, give her a thumbs up. If you've subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. And share, share, share. Talk to you guys on the next video. Tie lines. <laughs>